Welcome to the Rude Dog Show. This is Rudy Reyes. You know, I apologize. This past week has been absolutely unbelievable. Computer goes out, everything goes haywire, but you know what? Welcome to the show. I appreciate you, everybody, tuning in. It was fantastic to kind of take a break to look at things in a retrospective manner. Now, keys in point, Ryan Harris, former Steelers, and I said former because he retired the other day. I had a chance to talk to him for about 15 to 20 minutes, talking about everything from Martavis Bryant, Antonio Brown, and what retirement has in store for him. Of course, everything is prepared by yours truly, so I'm going to play you the full 20 minutes of my conversation with Ryan Harris, former, and I said former because he's retired, he's gone. You know, he can still do by his own admission, but I'll let the interview basically speak for itself. Well, there you go. That was the end of it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> that was just one start. That was one start. Sorry, I couldn't resist. Anyway, I want to play it for you from the, the beginning in its entirety. So give me one second and I'll get right to it. All right. This is my exclusive interview with Ryan Harris on the Rude Dog Show on WBLZSports.com. Look, download the app right now. This interview is fantastic. It gives you inside guy you probably don't know and aren't even familiar with, but you will after this interview.
Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That was my exclusive interview with Ryan Harris. Look, I apologize about the technical difficulties I had in the onset of this broadcast. But, look, this is where we're at right now. To kind of touch back and to go over some of the questions that I had for Ryan on on early part of the uh, of the conversation is that, look, undisclosed injuries can hurt your team. I don't care what team you're on. I don't care what position you play. If you don't disclose the injuries, if you don't allow the teams, the coaches, the position coaches to really say, well, can you make it? Can you not make it? What's the situation? Where are you at? And how can you be a part of this team if you're sidelined because you didn't tell me about some type of issue that you had early on, a groin, an elbow, a finger, a wrist, or whatever it may be. So those things are complete detractors from what you're trying to convey. The message that you are trying to get out to people is, is be genuine, be honest. If there's an injury, if there's something that's preventing you from getting back onto the field, whether it's in, in baseball, whether it's on the hardwood in basketball, or whether it's in an NFL field, you, you have to be honest. You have to be open. In this situation, this, this is where we're at. This, this is what has to be done. And unless you want to be a contributor to the system, then you have to sit on the sidelines. And it's unfortunate that most players do. That most players do. I'll be honest with you. When you look at these NFL teams and the amount of undisclosed injuries that occurred in 2016, there were at least a handful of them to key players in key positions on both sides of the ball, defensively and offensively, because all that affects special teams. But look, as I'm trying to log in, so that way I can talk to Markel Beckwith, uh, you know, you have to look at the types of teams that are out there that are going to be contenders. And Ryan's right on the point. Guys in the AFC are the Broncos, the Steelers, and the New England Patriots. All four of those teams were knocking on the door. But well, there's one team he failed to mention, and that's in the AFC West. Yeah, okay, Broncos will, yeah, granted. But you got to give it up to the Oakland Raiders and how they were able to handle not having David Carr, not having McGloin, and then leaving it to Connor Cook, a third, a third grade, third uh, quarterback, who otherwise had almost zero familiarity and had just a few days to prepare. I mean, you can't you can't get any better than that. Um, you just you just can't. Raiders are one of those teams that you really can't count out for being a part of an NFL race. And when I look at when I look at other teams in the NFL, I mean, we're talking when you're talking about. Other NFL teams, look, the Combines came and went. I could talk about the Combine as well. We're going to certainly talk about that in, in, in just, in just a moment. Um, but trying to, trying to log in here, you know, it's really about how you did. And I wish, you know, Ryan Harris the absolute best in his endeavors, whether it be, you know, broadcasting or, uh, whether he wants to, uh, contribute to, another, you know, another franchise sometimes down the road. Uh, and I believe he still has it. There's there's no doubt about it. Look at, at him play. Of course, he was injured when he was with the Steelers. But I can honestly tell you that looking at um, looking at looking at him, looking at the fact he was on IR for the Steelers. When I you know look at what he had done, he won a Super Bowl ring with the Denver Broncos. So certainly an offensive lineman who. Did his job, who did it well, protected Peyton Manning in the pocket. Of course, Peyton Manning, another guy to retire. And what's interesting is, is that there's a lot of retirements going on here uh, in the NFL. And, of course, the obligatory uh, guys who continue getting arrested for domestic violence. Uh, we were talking about uh, Trent, Trent Richardson. And then, clearly, the Jets wanted to release Darrell Rivas, who now truly, honestly, stands on an island of his own, and that's something that he's going to have to face and something that he's going to have to deal with for the remainder of his life, whether or not a team will uh, take a part of where he was. Because, look, he can't go to the New England Patriots. He's already been there. He's already been to New England. So as far as him getting another shot in the NFL, I don't know. And in all fairness, I don't see it. I just don't see it. I, I, I really don't. I, I truly honestly believe that once you burn bridges like that, and you could probably put a handful of guys in the conversation in relation to this is how you failed, this is where you are, uh, and it's just it's just really really unfortunate 
uh, that it didn't work out. And what's not working out is my sign-in machine. So that way I can sign in and have guests call in the show. Where can he go? He can go a myriad of places. Lots of teams could use a guy like that. Uh, of course, he, if he wants to drown his sorrows and end his career, he can certainly do it in Cleveland. There's no doubt about that. How many quarterbacks have been there in Cleveland? Of course, they had the first overall number one pick in the upcoming NFL draft. But in all fairness, are they really going to go after Deshaun Watson? I mean, this guy should want more of an opportunity to play for Cleveland. But then again, so did Johnny Menzel. He thought that he had a shot in Cleveland as well. That didn't quite work out. Yeah, I know. I said Johnny Menzel. I put that in the same conversation. Yeah, I did. I did. Darrell Revis, could he work in Cleveland? If he wants to, he's going to have to take a huge pay cut because the Cleveland Browns are not going to pay him what he's looking for. That's all there is to it. And then Brandon Marshall getting released by the New York Jets. Again, another Jet crashed and burned trying to find out where he belongs, where he should be, and where he can go. Brandon Marshall has tons more life left in him versus Darrell Revis, uh, who has clearly you know left himself out on, uh, on a ledge here. Brandon Marshall... Uh, I think just wanted out. I think the Jets are trying to perform some type of restructuring. I was talking to um, John Luke of Storage Wars. Me and him were going back and forth on the Twitter war. <laughs> sort of, kind of, the Twitter war. We were talking about what happens and who needs to go. Well, Bowles. Oh, Bowles. Did I see Bowles? No. Todd Bowles. <laughs> Todd Bowles needs to be the guy who gets who, who, who gets going. Uh I don't know that Marshall's going to the Pats. That would be that'd be another fantastic weapon. They didn't keep Martellus Bennett. Martellus Bennett uh, is going to sign a tender somewhere. I guarantee it. But you know what? I, I I agree that that Brandon Marshall can certainly go to the Patriots and certainly make a run uh, and be able to use his utilitarian dynamic to make something more of an opportunity there with the England Patriots. But there's there, there's other places as well. Steelers. And, you know, it's kind of interesting. Everybody wants to talk about, well, how the Steelers may not be, you know, have Martavis Bryant. But in all fairness, Martavis Bryant is a guy who stands alone all by himself. You know, where does he go? Well, he's going to come back to the Steelers. There's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it. Um, and I look at, um, I look at the type of places that guys like Brandon Marshall go. He could obviously go to the, to the LA Chargers as well. They have Melvin Gordon on a running slash, uh, Running back slash wide receiver role, um, and and I look at I look at Brandon Marshall. And I think to myself, uh, you know, this guy is solid. He's solid. He's very athletic. He definitely has the talent. He has the skill. He has the mindset. I think, again, it's a good system. It's where he needs to go. It's where he could land. Is what would be more beneficial to him. What will work for that player? But does a player recognize he has to work for the system as well? Where does he go? Where does any player go once they leave the NFL? Are they certainly a, a part of a new dynamic? Could their mindset change where they need to go to? Absolutely, they certainly can. The mindset can change. The attitude can change. The way that they play, the ability to rise up above the occasion, so you know what, so I'm not there anymore. Well, every player wants a ring. Don't you? I know I do. I don't have a Super Bowl ring. Then again, I don't play in the NFL. So no play, no winning team equals no ring. Well, there you go. That settles it all, doesn't it? Of course everybody wants a ring. Uh, LeVon Kirkland, Hall of Fame nominee, didn't get in the Hall of Fame, doesn't have a ring. You know, how many guys in the NFL does not have, they don't have a ring? They should. They should absolutely have a ring. They should have every inclination of wanting to get a ring by being with the right franchise. Going back to Ryan Harris, he did win a Super Bowl ring with the Denver Broncos, as you heard earlier on the interview, uh, talking about his his retirement, his his retirement hopeful, uh, where he's going, what he's going to do, how he's going to do it. And in all fairness, Ryan Harris could basically get back into the NFL. He's only 32 years old. He's still relatively young. Is he on the wrong side of 30 for offensive linemen? No, not necessarily because there's a lot of guys in the NFL who are currently on that very pace. That's just, that's just the way it is. That is the way it is. I'm going to try to play a commercial here, ladies and gentlemen. This is Rudy Ramsey on the Rude Dog Show. You can listen and tune in. It's free on Google. You can go to iTunes as well and download this fantastic app is really easy to use as well. I have it on my phone, but you know, I listen to it when I can, when I'm not preparing 
when I'm not editing, when I'm <laughs> when I'm not working, when I'm not doing all the things that I need to do in order to get the show going and moving and shaking and baking and getting it to the next level, then certainly that's where I'm at. Look, I wanted to shout out uh, to sponsors out there. I'm looking for sponsors for the Rude Dog Show, and this is the F the Facebook Live Pro version of looking for sponsors for the Rude Dog Show. Look, I can mention the, I can mention what you do and how you do it. I have a lot of great changes coming to the Rude Dog Show. Dot com as well. I'm going to have a lot more interviews. Uh, as a matter of fact, in 2018, as it stands right now, I will be attending uh, a, a Steelers NFL cruise as part of uh, what I'll have on the RudeDogShow.com. And I can't give it up quite yet. I can't give it up. I want to, but I can't. So you're going to have to bear with me. <laughs> you're going to have to bear with me and figure it out as well because I'm not quite sure uh when and I don't have all the specifics or anything. And then, of course, uh, I'm going to try to get Ben Quigley on me. And Ben Quigley been talking back and forth. His uh, past relative, uh, anybody ever heard of Hollywood Squares? Anybody? No? Okay. Well, <laughs> check out CelebritySquared.com. Celebrity Squared with a D. Dot com. I'm trying to get him on the show as well to talk about um, everything from what he's trying to accomplish, what he's looking for, and how he plans on getting there. And of course, I'm certainly going to help the cause. <laughs> I'm certainly going to help. Uh, and of course, I have no audio for a commercial, so I'll have to uh, give my own commercial, my own props uh, to Gen Service Hotline. They can take care of everything that you need. Just give them a call. They're readily available. 216-539-9967 is a Gen Service hotline number here. If I had Skype up, I'd be able to uh, take some phone calls and have some other interviews, but it's just going to be me for the next, I don't know, 15 to 17 minutes here on the RudeDogShow.com. Check out Anthony Gilbert and go to new-game-plan.com. He has some guys headed in to the NFL. I believe he has at least two or three guys heading into the NFL right now. Uh, I've, I've worked with, with him for, for quite some time. He's a proud sponsor of the Rude Dog Show. Certainly give him props where props is due. In addition to uh, not only him, but to uh, johnmalecki.com, he is a craftsman, former guard, Turn builder. If you can think it, he can build at johnmalecki.com. He can turn your thoughts of wood into a reality in your living room or near your bar or maybe a dinner table. Everybody needs to have somewhere to eat. Go to johnmalecki.com and he can certainly get it done for you. J O H N M A L E C K I.com. And of course, the wonderful uh, and Gracious, sedegumil.us. Check them out. They offer all types of vitamins, boosts your energy, maximize your potential. Go to sedegumil.us. And by the way, just in case you didn't know, he is in that, that company, and of course, he, the mastermind behind it all, <laughs> has certainly provided vitamins, minerals, and everything for Starling Marte. Who doesn't know Stoney Marte in, in Major League Baseball? Two-time Gold Glove winner. Got to love that guy. That's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Get your boost. You can get it from sanugamil.us. Maximize what you have. Now, I want to kind of switch gears here. And I want to talk about one, one particular combine moment. Now, Adidas originally had stated that if somebody was to break the speed, to break the record, they would get their own island. I don't think that applies to Rich Eisen, because Rich Eisen clearly, you know, he has this, his own contributions, and I don't think Adidas reached out to him anyway. But when you look at John Ross out of Washington, this guy said a 4.22, you you could always question whether or not Chris Johnson was the fastest guy. Of course, a little bit slower than John Ross, but clearly both these guys are extremely fast. I mean, in all fairness, who's going to run a 4-2-2 off the line? Speed only accounts for 
about 25 to 30% of a player's athletic capability. Let's face it. Let's call it what it is. John Ross did in a 4.22. So is he going to be one of the top wide receivers picked in the NFL draft based on that number? Yes. Should it be that way? Not necessarily because speed is not the only thing that you need. You need athleticism. You need to be able to turn at the hips. you got to be able to turn around physically on the ball, have very good solid hands to grab the ball out of the air, off the ground, so it doesn't bounce. So you have to be that sharp, that fast, that skilled. I think John Ross has a lot of that. But, again, this is a this is a collegiate level that we're talking about. This is where he's at on a collegiate level. We're not talking about where he's going to be at in an NFL level, on an NFL team, on an NFL roster, doing his thing. No, not at all. You're going to see John Ross be extremely explosive. Uh, and then, again, he's going up against a guy named Jalen Jalen Merrick out of Minnesota because Jalen Merrick had a 4.28. Again, one of the faster guys – to enter the draft, these guys have serious upside. They're fast, they're speedy, their football IQ is, well, off the chart. And what's more interesting than that is a guy who follows up very quickly behind him is Curtis Samuel. And Curtis Samuel out of 4.31 looks to be, again, top three guys heading into the NFL draft. Should end up being picked relatively high. Relatively high. There's a lot of other guys, a lot of great contenders. Fabian Moreau at a UCLA, Marshawn Lattimore at Ohio State, uh, TJ Lloyd out of North Carolina. You look, you have you have two more Shaquille Griffin out of Central Florida and Josh Malone out of Tennessee, uh, Obi Melefonu out of Connecticut, and Cordria Tankersley out of Clemson. Uh, look, those are your those are your top eight fastest guys. Both eight safety quarterback wide receiver all had a four point four zero. That's not bad. But again, this is just speed. This doesesn't say anything about the the twenty yard shuttle, your cones. It doesn't say anything about your jumps, your verticals. Nothing, nothing. It just says that you're fast. That's all there is to it. You're fast. You're speedy. You're capable. You're able, and you can get it done. That's that's all there is to it. That's all there is to it. But I like the draft process. I appreciate the draft process. I've interviewed a lot of draftees myself. Um, Trying to get Markel Beckwith on the line with me. Unfortunately, I don't I don't have a way to communicate with him in relation to getting him on the show. Uh, but I will do so tomorrow. I'll give him a full 30, uh, as well as uh, a, a couple other guys at FAU. I have them going to be live on the show as well. You know, I don't do written, uh, written interviews, but <laughs> I do my best with the audio stuff. I can tell you that much right now. Uh, <laughs> So anyway, good stuff. Uh, I look forward to having even more fantastic talent here on the Rude Dog Show, uh, along with Ryan Harris. So it's good to talk to Ryan Harris. It's kind of interesting how that all transpired because Ryan Harris is one of those guys where I just asked him, I said, look, I'd like to get you on the show to talk about your retirement, your retirement process. Uh, we didn't go into draft. We didn't go into any of that. But, you know, because you clearly know where he's at right now and he belonged in the NFL. That's exactly what happened to him. He ended up in the NFL. He won a Super Bowl ring with the Denver Broncos in 2015. You know, it, it, it's kind of interesting to think that they could not uh, do anything this past year with Trevor Simeon. He had sub, you know, in, in different instances. Some of it was Trevor Simeon. Some of it was offensive line breaking down uh, to apply tackles. And unfortunately for the Denver Broncos as well, they're going to have to do something defensively in, in the draft. And why they got rid of a couple guys in, during rookie minicamp is beyond me. It, beyond me. Totally beyond me. Uh, a lot of guys I've had the chance to interview as well. But, you know, that's, that's a business. That's a life of an NFL talent. That's, you know, it is what it is. A lot of guys will get shifted going from point A to point B, and this is where they're at. And unfortunately, sometimes they are in the C portion where they see themselves out of being in the NFL. So, look, this is Rude Dog's Rant, sponsored by, well, me, myself, and I. This is Rudy Reyes on the Rude Dog Show, WBLZSports.com. I do have about 10 minutes left here on this show. And, again, I had some technical difficulties early on. But, you know, we got to be able to move on, move forward, and this is where we're at. So, when I'm talking about 
professionalism in the NFL. And I've talked about this on the show before. I guess these guys don't want to listen. They don't want to pay attention. They want to make their own decisions, do their own things, and handle things the way they believe they need to be handled. Unfortunately, you you have not been in the league long enough to even be considered somebody who can handle what you do on your own, how you do it, and what way you do it, and to look for somebody to somebody else for some advice, for a better, positive uh, conversation, mentorship. And I've said it before here on the show. Of course, you can go to the Rudolph Show dot com forward slash mentorship services. I do have some services there as well, allowing people, uh, allowing you know guys, even gals, to be involved in the mentorship process because everybody needs mentoring, even NFL players, especially while they're in the NFL. And again, some of them do make those poor decisions. So to have somebody who understands, who's been there, done that, who can certainly be a part of the decision-making process to help them along the way, to help fluid, uh, fluidly put their lives back together, if not help them stay together while they're in the NFL. So uh, it, it's unfortunate. So my rant is this. If you're a professional, act professionally. If you're in the industry, do it professionally. Do it uh, on the upright. In, in other words, it's not the situation, it's how you respond to the situation, so take that situation and learn something from it. Understand what it's for. Understanding where it's at. Understanding what you have to do in order to not only remain positive, but to retain people that are around you that are of a positive nature, that are uh, part of a positive mindset, that can certainly do positive things with you and for you and by your side and not to allow other individuals to come in that are looking to basically take your money by saying, oh, well, you know, I'm your uncle, brother's cousin, sister's dad from your mom's side. You know, that's <laughs> on the ridiculous side. But the point is this, is that unless you understand and want to become monetary beneficial. Doesn't Ryan Harris said, hey, look, he's financially responsible. He's been doing this a long time. He's appropriated his money uh, accordingly, wherever it needed to go, however he needed to put it there. He certainly did just that. And now he has the freedom, financial freedom, who does not want to have financial freedom, especially guys retiring from the NFL who have kids, who have wives, and they're trying to make sure that their kids and wives are set up for the rest of their life because they may not be around. Their kids are the younger generation, so why not be able to help set them up, not only from a monetary perspective, but giving them the understanding that it takes responsibility to make sure that they utilize those funds in a very positive way, in a forthcoming way, in an honest way, in a in such a throughput that by the time they enter college, they can make the decision as to what they want to do. So again, he has a financial freedom down pat, and the only way he was able to do that is by making sure that he took his money he took his money and distributed it accordingly. Of course, somebody just came onto the wire here. Apparently, Adrian Peters is talking to the Oakland Raiders right now, as well as Seahawks. There has been some interest on both sides just on a football note. So keep an eye on that one. I think I think Adrian Peterson would be a lot. He would be a beast behind the Seattle Seahawks and be able to rub it into the Minnesota Vikings in that NFC uh, North division, along with the Green Bay Packers, of course, Green Bay dealing with their own running back situation as well. The biggest question is, what do they do? How do they get somebody back? Um, I don't know that I don't know that Adrian Peterson should have necessarily not taken a bullet in order to stay with the team uh, for which he was drafted by. But again, as I said earlier, it's a team that fits the system, not always the system that fits the player. So you have to look at both sides of the coin here. Does he belong in the NFL? Absolutely. Does Adrian Peterson still have what it takes to stay in the NFL? You're absolutely right he does. Uh, in any other, any team, any of the 31 other teams other than the Minnesota Vikings that released him would uh, love to have Adrian Peterson as a part of their backfield. That's a guaranteed fact. Nobody can argue that. That is what it is. So I am basically out of time. I'm out of time. Got to get the communication thing fixed for tomorrow. So, look, I apologize about it. I thank you for your time. I thank you for your listenership. Everybody, download the app. Check out the show. Go to therudogshow.com forward slash sponsors. I'd like to get as many sponsors as possible, but for me, it's quality over quantity. That's just the way it is here. That's how I do things. Anyway, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I'll be back tomorrow uh, at 4 p.m. Central. 
uh, 5 p.m. Eastern Time. This is Rudy Reyes on the Rude Dog Show at WBLZSports.com.